Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table and let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a chance to play Glenn Moore from Matthias Kramer? This is a tile laying game that has some really, really unique mechanisms in here of how you are going to acquire tiles and how they cycle through and specific rules of how you place them. And it's really, really a game that is loved by a lot of people and it's on a lot of other people's wish lists because of its rarity. Well, Dan Cunningham of Iron Kitten Games has done Loon Architects. Now this is a reimagining of Glenmore and what he does is captures the core essence and mechanisms of Glenmore, puts it into a space themed game and puts some twists on there by adding different scoring opportunities. Let's take a look at Loon Architects, how it's played and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Here we have the game at setup and what I've done is each player will receive their player pawn and their starting quarters. Uh, at the beginning of the game. Now let's take a look at this. There's some important information on here. First of all, this is going to show a quarters here and then we have tubes and rails that branch off of here. This is going to be really important because as we play the game that we have to be able to connect like to like. So we have to connect rails to rails, tubes to tubes, and we can't place any tiles that are going to cause a break or start new tubes or rails. So everything's going to branch out. Um, there's also going to be a one-time bonus when we place this particular tile. Um, it's going to be the same for any of the other ones that are out there. So this one's going to give me three money and an astronaut. If I chose to play the other side, it would just give me two astronauts. Down at the bottom is going to be the power that's going to trigger on that particular tile when it's activated, and I'll talk about that when we get into the gameplay. And then in a lot of them, there's going to be a cost over on this side and resources that we'll have to pay in order to purchase that tile and build it and put that blueprint in here. And then uh, up at the top, sometimes there will be little symbols there, and those are going to be used for point scoring opportunities. So in the green quarters, we've got uh, set up over here. Now we have the, we're going to just go ahead and go with the pre-printed scoring opportunities on here, and I'm going to play through the first lap <clears throat> so that you can see how the game uh, plays out. And it's going to be the same for the rest of the game going with the... Uh, mid and late tile. So I have all the resources up here and we have the market set off with initial uh, coins set on one for like two for two player games. We have coins set up here so if we want to start buying resources it's going to cost us at least two coins. So the way that this is going to work is that with uh, in a two player game or three players we place this white die in the first space and then we put our uh, player pieces randomly selected uh, behind there and then what we do is we shuffle up all the initial blueprints and we start from this uh, this line and we start placing them around in this direction and then once if we have any additional spaces we're going to fill in from the early phase so that there is one space uh, behind whoever is last and so as we're playing out the game um, as soon as this space is opened up we're going to fill in new tiles so you're going to see this uh, this pile of tiles deplete now uh, the turn order is going to be uh, very much like Glenmore and Takedo, and whoever is the furthest behind is going to be their turn. And so the green player is actually going to start off the game. And what we will do is we will move our pawn as far forward around as we would like and be able to take that tile and we'll be able to place that particular blueprint as they call it and build out our moon base some of the tiles are going to cause um, cost resources and uh, we have to be aware that when we're placing them we can only place them uh, in next to a tile where there's an astronaut and we have to come up with a strategy of what we are going to be looking for so uh, for example, this one, for each lap as we go around, we're going to want to, it says all players score points equal to their total number of red items. So it's going to be red rockets, crystals, and red tiles. And then the end of the game scoring opportunities, we're going to get three points for each of our blueprints that are completely surrounded by other blueprints. So if we have tiles that are, so if we can build something where it's going to be a condensed cluster opposed to like snaking out, that's going to be good for us. And then eight points for each point scoring category that I have none of. So at the end, if I decide I don't want to go after rockets or crystals or red tiles, I can get eight points. 
So I have to weigh my options as to what I want to do throughout the game. <coughs> so um, it seems to me that it's going to be good to go after some of these, but not all, and then also try to build out in a cluster. And that's going to affect my decision for the tiles that I'm going to take. So anyway, let's get started here. The green player is going to decide uh, right away that we want to produce uh, some resources to be able to uh, buy things down the road. And so we're going to move ahead forward to this distiller. And what I'll do is I'll take that blueprint now and I will add it into my moon base. Now if we pay some attention here, it's a, it's a triangle type, which this is uh, ne necessarily going to be uh, a point scoring thing for this particular opportunity. Uh, it is a rail that we need to pay attention to and it's going to produce water. So when I place this down, I have to place this uh, next to a tile where there's an astronaut and it's going to either be able to go here or it's going to be able to go down on the other side here to line up. So let's say we're going to go up this way and what's going to happen is this tile is going to activate. It's going to produce one water resource for us. I place that right on the tile and it's also going to trigger all the other tiles around it that it's touching. So at this point it's going to trigger this green tiles ability which is going to allow me to move the astronaut which I will move him here. So he's going to start moving throughout the moon base which is going to be uh, good. And then uh, it's going to be the yellow player's turn. <coughs> now the yellow player may decide that we want to uh, do something a little bit different and uh, we're going to choose to move uh, uh, just ahead to this quarters and we're just going to grab this one. And we will place it down next to one of our tiles. This is going to add an additional astronaut here and it's going to trigger this and I can choose to move this astronaut if I want to. I'm going to choose not to at this particular point. But the benefit is I have two astronauts to work with. Now it's going to be the white player's turn, or which is the dummy player. We just roll this die, and it's going to move forward a number of spaces, not counting where the players are. So it's going to go one, two. And what's going to happen is this is going to move, remove this tile from the game. <coughs> so looking at the player order, where and now, since this one has moved, and actually I should have moved some things before, these tiles should have been uh, filled in. And so we always have one space behind there. So that was my fault that I did that. But uh, anyways, now it's the yellow player's turn. And we're going to, uh, again, move ahead. And we're going to move all the way up to this distiller. And we're going to grab that and we're going to place this here. And now it's going to, we have matched up the tube type, tube to tube. And it, this is going to produce uh, water on this particular one and it's going to trigger both of these to allow us to move the astronauts and so I'm just going to move this one here. It's going to trigger this one and this one. I'm going to choose not to move that one. So now we have to fill in another tile and it's going to be the green player's turn. The green player is looking to uh, we have to have something to fill in this space here or here or here and preferably something that is going to um, to uh, build into a cluster. So this looks pretty good up here with this. We'll go with this purifier. And we will take this one, place it down here into our moon base. It's adjacent to this astronaut. It's going to produce an air. It's going to trigger this one to produce uh, a, a water and it's going to trigger this one which will allow me to move the astronaut which I'll move back this way. <coughs> now one thing to note is that a lot of these tiles have a maximum production limit on here of three. So I, this one here I'm almost at maximum capacity as to what I can st store for my resources. So now we've got an empty space back here. We have to f um, actually fill this one in and this one will go out because it got passed over and fill this in here. And so now it is the white player's turn. It's going to move forward two, one, two, removing this one and this one, filling in tiles again. It's going to be the white player's turn because they're in the back of the line again. 
rolling the die, we're going to move forward one here to this purifier, removing that, and we will now fill in this space. So now it's going to be the yellow player's turn again. Uh, we're going to look and see if we want to have some red tiles, what we want to do. Um, and there's specific symbols that are on there. <coughs> and this one says, uh, this particular one, will tell us that we would be able to activate any of our tiles that have a rectangle type, which we don't have any at this particular point. We only have a, a, a round and a, a circle in this one. So that may not necessarily be one that we would like. Uh, don't know if, what we can afford at this particular point. Uh, let's go ahead and move, we'll move into this particular space and we'll take this one. And this is going to tell me that it's all three of these different types. And we will place that here, next to this particular tile, because we have to be aware of what we can place. And it's going to trigger this particular one, which is going to produce a water resource. And again, now we're going to fill in behind here with one tile. It's back to the white player's turn. We're going to move ahead two spaces, one, two. These tiles are going to be removed. And we're going to fill in this space here for right now. And it's going to be the green player's turn. And the green player is going to decide to move over here to this biome. We're going to take this one and we're going to place it here like this. This is going to produce one food for us. And it's going to activate this particular tile which is going to allow me to move my astronaut. Which I am not going to choose to move at this particular point. <coughs> We've got space back here to fill in. It's going to be the yellow player's turn. And we're going to move to this, we're going to move to this particular space and grab a purifier. And we will go down here and place this in this particular space down here next to an astronaut. Let me move this down so you can see where I've placed this. I placed it right here. And this is going to allow me to uh, gather produce one air here it's going to trigger this one to produce a water so this is now maxed out with water and it's going to trigger this one allowing me to move um, an astro move one of the astronauts which I'm going to choose not to move I've got a nice little cluster going on here which is really good and now we're going to fill in these tiles again back here this and this it's going to be the white player's turn again. Two spaces, so one, two, moving this one out. And um, filling in this particular space here. Whoops, sorry. Green player's turn is going to move forward. Let's see what we're looking to do. Uh, we need to have some additional astronauts. So we'll move here to this quarters and we'll place it over here like this. It's going to cost me one water to do that, so I'll pay my water resource, and it's going to trigger this one, which is going to uh, allow me to produce a food, and it's also going to give me an astronaut here, and it's going to allow me to uh, trigger this one, which is going to be allowing me to move an astronaut. I will go this way and we fill in the space over here. And next we have this, uh, we have, oops, I'm sorry, not this, the yellow player's turn. The yellow player is, um, let's see, what do we have for our resources? Um, the yellow player is going to decide to buy something from the uh, market. We are going to spend um, two coins to, to buy a stone which we'll take down here and put this in our resource. We're going to move ahead to this backer quarters. And we're going to pay our resources here. We have to pay one air, one water, and one stone, which we have our water, we have our air, and we'll pay that rock there, stone. And we'll be able to place this um, 
and next to where there's an where there is an astronaut, which we'll place it right here. This is going to give me um, a rocket, a crystal, and another astronaut, and it's going to trigger this one, allowing me to move an astronaut, which we will move. Uh, We'll move this way. We'll just fill in the space here. So now <clears throat> we've completed the first lap. And we're going to look at uh, the scoring opportunities here. And it says each lap, all, once all players have gone through here, we've completed a lap, we're going to have the scoring. And so it says all players score points equal to their total number of red items. So the green player, we have one red crystal. They're going to score one point. However, the yellow player has gone out and done a few different things, and so we're going, we have two red tiles, so we have one, two. We have one red rocket and one red crystal, so that's going to three, four. So that's going to give me four points, so I'll turn this one in and get a five. And so we have done this first lap. We're going to continue to go around. Once these early blueprints are gone, we're going to move into the mid phase and then when those are gone, we're going to move into the late phase. And what will happen is we will move around this four complete times. So I wanted to give you an overview of how Loon Architects is played. This is the first round, and so it's going to be uh, continue on for three more laps. And that's how you play. All right, so you had a chance to see uh, Loon Architects played out at least the first lap. So um, we got a chance to see some different strategies. I showed you two different players and the tiles that they were acquiring. And then I wanted you to see at least how the lap scoring went. And that's going to continue on in the game. Three more laps and then we'll have the end of game uh, scoring. Now, uh, we talk about this game and the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that Dan Cunningham has done a great homage to Glenn Moore with Loon Architects. Now, with Glenn Moore, the thing that stood out to me was the way that you were acquiring tiles to be able to build out your village. And then also the rules as to how you can place them, but specifically um, how you acquire the tiles and how they cycle through. And it worked really, really well for him in this game that, in fact, earlier this year, he did Kraftwagen and used the same mechanism for acquiring tiles in there. So, uh, something that works really, really well for him. And so uh, it's great that Dan Cunningham has latched onto that and created Loon Architects. Now he's done a reimagining of the game, and it's not an exact clone, which I'm glad that he did. And now here's one of the things that um, you may disagree with me, and some people may say I'm way off, but I'm gonna, I say that Loon Architects is a better game than Glenn Moore. It's an improvement on it. Now, uh, Glenn Moore is a game that I love, and obviously Dan Cunningham must love it too, the fact that he decided to do a reimagining of it. But the, thing, the reason that I say that it, this is the better game is that we have the variable scoring mechanisms on here from the, the different, we can choose a lap tokens, um, you know, how we're going to play the game out. We, you know, each game, it's going to be different because just by changing this, can affect how we play the game, let alone the fact that we can also change around the end of game scoring mechanism. So every time we play the game, it's going to be different, and it's also going to um, change the different tiles that we're going to acquire. So it's going to give you a different feel each time that you play the game, and so it's going to be something that is going to be taken off of the shelf a lot more because each time that you play it, it's a different feel. And if there's a specific way that you like to play, just set it up that way and you'll be ready to go. Now, uh, again, with the designer, he must really like space-themed games because early on when I first started doing reviews, one of the early on games that I did, uh, that I reviewed was Starstead that he had done. And he has a couple of other games that are on print-on-demand, and he had done a game he's working on called Mind the Moon, and hopefully one day that will come about. That's a worker placement game. It uh, has a lot of feel like uh, Stone Age does. But uh, Loon Architects has done a great job here with um, capturing the essence of, of Glenn Moore. <clears throat> I like the artwork. Um, I think it's really, really cool. Um, however, on the prototype thing, some of the stuff, it's a, a light print, especially where it talks about the resources, the maximum on there. But again, this is only a prototype, so I'm sure that that's going to be uh, 
address later on. And I do feel that with this game, he's done a great job of making it more family friendly. Um, with Glenn Moore, you were producing whiskey barrels. This does not have any alcohol reference in there. And then also, um, with the variable scoring opportunities, it's going to make the game uh, a little bit less pressing because in Glenn Moore, when it's your turn and you're choosing tiles, and one of the reasons why I like it is the fact that you don't want to, uh, you just don't want to keep using that opportunity of being behind to uh, just acquiring all these tiles because you're going to lose points if you have more than your opponents. So it really keeps it neck and neck and, and um, keeps that tension throughout the game. This one here, there are tiles that do the same thing, but this is going to allow you to acquire tiles in a different way and gives the game a different feel. And so I think that, again, it's going to make the game a little bit more family friendly because it's not going to be as pressing in the game. So overall, Lune Architects, I think, is an outstanding game. Uh, like I said, I really, I love Glenn Moore. I really, really love Lune Architects. I think that he has done a great job in uh, capturing the essence of a game that is loved by many and done something with it by putting a twist on it and giving uh, some variable scoring options with it. So if this is a game that you are interested in backing because it's currently on Kickstarter, I'll have information in the video link below that uh, you can go ahead and click on that. It'll take you over to the page and uh, you can go ahead and help in making this game uh, come to the marketplace. All right, that's it for now and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table. Bye-bye.